Hello, welcome to Carmelite Conversations. This is Frances Harry. Recently, Paul Adams, a professed member of the Dayton, Ohio Discalced Carmelite Secular Order, recently gave our community a presentation on what Pope St. John Paul II said about Our Lady of Mount Carmel, and this was in his message to the Carmelite family in March of 2001. It is applicable for today as well as then. You may find this speech online easily. I'd like to share that presentation with you now so that you also may reap the benefits of hearing what Pope St. John Paul II shared. So let us listen now to see what we can learn today. God bless you. In honor of Our Lady of Mount Carmel's feast day on July 16th, I would like to begin with an opening prayer dedicated to her. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. O oh, most beautiful flower of Mount Carmel, fruitful vine, splendor of heaven, blessed mother of the Son of God, immaculate virgin, assist us in our necessity. O oh, star of the sea, help and show us herein that you are our mother. O Holy Mary, Mother of God, Queen of heaven and earth, I humbly beseech you from the bottom of my heart to aid us in this necessity. There are none that can withstand your power. O show us who herein you are our mother. O, O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Sweet Mother, I place this cause in your hands. Amen. As a Discalce Carmelite Secular during formation, I have been introduced to encyclicals and messages written by various popes. I have been given many spiritual jewels by their writings. I believe it is important for us to periodically read their encyclicals and messages that can guide us on our spiritual journey. What are they saying to us that we can incorporate into our daily lives? Today, I will be relating to you a message of John Paul II to the Carmelite family concerning our blessed mother, Mary. Even though it was written on March 25th of 2001, his message is relevant to us even today. Virgin Mother's loving presence in our lives. The scapular is essentially a habit. Those who receive it are associated more or less closely with the order of Carmel and dedicate themselves to the service of Our Lady for the good of the whole church. The Pope goes on to tell us that there are two, two truths ev evoked by the sign of the scapular. On the one hand, the constant protection of the Blessed Virgin, not only on life's, life's journey, but also at the moment of passing into the fullness of eternal glory. On the other, the awareness that devotion to her cannot be limited to prayers and tributes in her honor on certain occasions, but must become a habit that is, a permanent orientation of one's own Christian conduct, woven of prayer and interior life, through frequent reception of the sacraments and the concrete practice of spiritual and corporal works of mercy. In this way, the scapular becomes a sign of the covenant and reciprocal communion between Mary and the faithful. Indeed, it concretely translates the gift of his mother, which Jesus gave on the cross to John and through him to all of us, and the entrustment of the beloved apostle and of us to her, who became our spiritual mother. The entire Carmelite family is to deepen not only its Marian spirituality, but also to live more and more in the light of the place which the Virgin Mother of God and of mankind holds in the mystery 
of Christ and the church. And therefore, to follow her, who is the star of evangelization. He continued to say, in the Carmelite's journey toward the mountain of God, Christ the Lord, the various generations of Carmel, from the beginning until today, have sought to model their lives on Mary's example. In Carmel, therefore, in every soul moved by tender affection for the Blessed Virgin and Mother, there has thrived a contemplation of her, whom from the beginning knew how to open herself to hearing God's word and to obey his will. For Mary, taught and formed by the Spirit, was able by faith to understand her own mystery and history, docile to the divine promptings, advanced in her pilgrimage of faith, and faith fully preserved in her union with her son unto the cross. Where she stood in keeping with the divine plan, enduring with her only begotten son, the intensity of his suffering and associating herself with his sacrifice in her mother's heart. Contemplation of the Virgin presents her to us as a loving mother who sees her son growing up in Nazareth, follows him on the roads in Palestine, and helps him at the wedding of, at Cana and at the foot of the cross, becomes the mother associated with his offerings given to all people when Jesus himself entrusts her to his beloved disciple. As mother of the church, the Blessed Virgin is one of the disciples in constant prayer as the new woman who anticipates in herself what will one day be come to pass for all of us in the full enjoyment of the Trinitarian life. She is taken up into heaven from where she spreads the protective mantle of her mercy over her children on their pilgrimage to the holy mountain of glory. Such a contemplative attitude of mind and heart prompts admiration of the Virgin's experience of faith and love. She already lives in herself all that every believer desires and hopes to attain in the mystery of Christ and the Church. Therefore, Carmelites have chosen Mary as their patroness and spiritual mother and always keep before their eyes the most pure virgin who guides everyone to the perfect knowledge and imitation of Christ. Thus, an intimacy of spiritual relations has blossomed, leading to an ever-increasing communion with Christ and Mary. For the members of the Carmelite family, Mary, the Virgin Mother of God and mankind, is not only a model to imitate, but also the sweet presence of a mother and sister in whom to confide. St. Teresa of Jesus rightly urged her sisters, imitate Our Lady and consider how great she must be and what a good thing it is that we have her as our patroness. This intense Marian life, which is expressed in the trusting prayer, enthusiastic praise, and diligent imitation enables us to understand how the most genuine form of devotion to the Blessed Virgin, expressed by the humble sign of the scapular, is consecration to her Immaculate Heart. In this way, the heart grows in communion and familiarity with the Blessed Virgin as a new way of living for God and of continuing here on earth the love of Jesus, the Son, for his mother Mary. Thus, as the Blessed Carmelite martyr Titus Bransma expressed it, we are put in profound harmony with Mary, the Theotokos, that is, Mother of God, and become, like her, 
transmitters of divine life. The Lord also sends his angel to us. We too must accept God in our hearts, carry him in our, our hearts, push him and make him grow in us so that he is born of us and lives with us as the God with us, Emmanuel. Over time, this rich Marian heritage of Carmel has become, through the spread of the Holy Scapular devotion, a treasure for the whole church. By its simplicity, its anthropological value, and its relationship to Mary's role in regard to the church and humanity, this devotion was so deeply and widely accepted by the people of God that it came to be expressed in the memorial on July 16th, celebrating the feast of the solemnity of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, which was placed on the liturgical calendar of the Universal Church. A splendid example of this Marian spirituality, which inwardly molds individuals and conforms them to Christ, the firstborn of many brethren, is the witness to holiness and wisdom given by so many Carmelite saints, all of whom grew up in the shadow and under the protection of our mother. Pope John Paul wore the brown scapular of Carmel over his heart for a long time, wore it out of his love for the common heavenly mother whose protection he constantly experienced. His hope for us was that all men and women religious of Carmel and devout of faithful who venerate her with filial affection grow in her love to radiate to the world the presence of this woman of silence and prayer, evoking her as mother of mercy and mother of hope and grace. As he ended his message, he imparted his apostolic blessing to all friars, nuns, sisters, and lay people of the Carmelite family who work so hard in spreading among the people of God true devotion to Mary, star of the sea and flower of Carmel. Let us be inspired by Pope John Paul II's message to venerate Blessed Mother of Mercy, Mother of Hope and Grace, with filial affection, humbly embracing and imitating her. With the help of the Holy Spirit, let us attempt to spread among the people of God true devotion to her. In closing, I would like to end with a prayer to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, assist us and guide us. You know better than we that we are in an authentic time of grace. We are called here and now to be prophetic, sensing in faith the way to go together, thus corresponding to God's will. We implore you in seeking divine support in continuing to walk the path of holiness in community with the virtues of endurance, patience, meekness, joy, humor, daring, and fervor. Help us to promote the witness of the kingdom in the midst of the world, and thus collaborate in the mission of the church and the order. I humbly beseech you to aid us in this desire and necessity of ours. Amen. Thank you for listening.